Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us. I'm Brian Grenry. And I'm Michelle Rose. In the news, Region 10 police make a huge drug bust. And it may take a lawsuit to determine who won the mayor's job in one of our towns. But first at five, a Region 10 attorney is sentenced for his part in a prison kickback scheme. Captain Jack Wiley and his secretary were convicted of mail fraud and money laundering in October. They illegally funneled money through the East Carroll Detention Center and former Sheriff Dale Rick Renneker. Renneker pleaded guilty and Wiley and his secretary were sentenced to Today. Region 10's John Cochran was at the courthouse all day. He joins us now with a live report. John, what is the latest? Uh, let me tell you about it, Michelle. Just about a half an hour ago, both Wiley and Morgale received their sentence. They are both going to prison. This was the decision it was made today here in court by federal judge Tucker Melanson. And he said that Wiley and Morgale could have been sent to prison for more than 200 years, but he decided to take it easy on them for a number of reasons. Um, both of them, like you said, are going to prison for their involvement in a kickback scheme at the East Carroll Detention Center. Now, let me tell you what their sentences were. 80-year-old Captain Jack Wiley got four years in prison, and he was fined $17,500. And meanwhile, 71-year-old Dorothy Morgill received a sentence of one year and one day in prison, and she's going to have to pay $12,500. Now, these were light sentences. The judge took into account their advanced age and a number of other factors. Um, Morgell has diabetes. Um, Wiley set, tried to prove today that he has uh, advanced Alzheimer's, but the judge didn't, judge didn't go for that. They, but they got easy sentences anyway. Um, one of the reasons why Morgell got an easier one is because they said that she simply may have been following her boss's order. So she didn't get a severe sentence as her boss, Wiley. So one of the best things, though, today, this was the highlight for the state, was the fact that they said that the East Carroll Detention Center is now four feet. It, all the money that was in holding, it is all forfeit now. And this wraps up the first half of the sentencing in this case. Dale Rineker, Sheriff Dale Rineker, former Sheriff Dale Rineker, will have to wait for two more weeks to find out what he gets. I'm John Cochran, down at the Federal Courthouse in Monroe, reporting live. Michelle, back to you. Thanks, John. And we'll have more on this story at 6 o'clock. Who will be the next mayor of Winsboro? That question is still up in the air 10 days after the election. The first vote count showed Jack Hammonds had beaten incumbent Billy Cobb by one vote. But when election commissioners recounted the absentee ballots, they found a mistake. That took the win away from Hammonds and gave it to Cobb. Now Hammonds is suing to get that one vote back. The suit says errors and fraud turned the election in Cobb's favor. A trial is scheduled for Friday. Region 10 police are investigating a burglary at one of their own offices. Someone broke into a drug task force evidence room. It happened early Monday morning in Camden, the same day Ken Jones was to start as the new task force interim director. Jones had planned to inventory the office on Monday, but all that changed. Police say the suspects busted the locks on the back door and then forced their way into the evidence room. A heavy metal object was used to open the door and after entry was made, uh, their evidence locker, which was uh, also a wooden door uh, secured by two heavy metal locks, was broken into. Police were at the scene 45 seconds after the alarm sounded. Because the evidence items have never been inventory, the cops can't figure out what was taken. Police are also concerned how the break-in will affect evidence contamination in future cases. We'll have more details at 6 o'clock. Well, speaking of drug cases, Region 10 police have a big one on their hands right now. Cops in Washita Parish believe this man is one of the biggest drug dealers in northeast Louisiana. He is Benny Collins. Undercover officers bought drugs from Collins last night. They arrested him in this sports utility vehicle. Police then searched this bar called the Club Graveyard. They found a large amount of cash there. The cops also seized several vehicles along with many of Collins' possessions from both his home and the bar. One of the most highly sought-after high school basketball prospects in the country ended all of the speculation on where he will go to college. Sports Director Bo Bayman joins us now, who is on hand at Washita High School. Brandon Ean, a big announcement today. Big announcement. You know, it took him a while, and he waited and waited because he wanted to get all his visits in, and it's a good thing. He ended all speculation today. From the beginning, the people who saw Brandon Dean play knew he was something special. Today, the six-foot guard decided he wanted to further his skills under Nolan Richardson at Arkansas. 
Arkansas. Dean chose the Hogs over LSU and Florida State in the end, much to the chagrin of Tiger fans in Northeast Louisiana. But Dean, who averaged over 28 points his senior year, says he knew it was Arkansas after last weekend's visit to Fayetteville. After taking a visit and enjoying myself on a visit, and I'm um, on the way home, me and my family decided, you know, the best place for me would be to the University of Arkansas. So he's going to Arkansas. He picked it over LSU and Florida State. Those were the final three. A lot of angry Tiger fans, and they're saying, Woo Pig Suey yeah. in Arkansas. I think I can hear it all the way from Dave. Yeah, that's right. Thank you, Bo. Michelle? Early morning commuters faced a slight delay on the way to work this morning. One lane of I-20 was blocked while police cleared a wreck involving a 18-wheeler and a trailer. The accident happened near the Calhoun exit. State police say shortly before the excuse me shortly before four this morning, a semi ran off the road and smashed into a tractor trailer parked on the shoulder. The tractor trailer was unoccupied at the time. Jeffrey Payne was driving the 18-wheeler. He was taken to Glenwood Medical Center with moderate injuries. Payne was also ticketed for careless operations. Louisiana legislators are working to make our roads safer. The House passed a number of bills trying to decrease the number of accidents at railroad crossings. One of the bills requires the state to survey all railroad crossings on state roads and close the ones that aren't needed. Any local government that wants to keep a crossing open would have to pay to upgrade it with proper signals. Another bill allows the state to repair warning devices if railroad companies don't do that. And another bill requires engineers to sound the train horn a quarter mile from crossing as opposed to the current 300 yards. While the Louisiana legislature is thinking about train safety, the federal government is trying to make flying less dangerous. A new aviation Thank safety you, agenda is designed to cut accidents 80% over the next 10 years. Vice President Al Gore Thank said expanding much. engine inspections much, and improving pilot warning detection systems would significantly reduce the number of plane crashes and save lives. The steps we are announcing today will make the safest skies in the world even safer by targeting and then preventing the leading causes of fatalities and in injuries. Gore said other problem areas include runway accidents, approach and landing problems, and dangerous weather. It was 86 years ago today, the world's most famous, uh, excuse me, I'm sorry. Um, if you haven't done your taxes yet, you've probably got a long night ahead of you. If you have, you may want to take another look at your copies. They say a lot about the kind of person you'll be, and we've got that story coming up. And if you've been spending the weekends getting dirty in your garden, you're probably, you'll probably have some questions for our Call 10 guest today. Nursery owner Sonny Panzico is with us, so get your plant and shrub and flower questions ready. A toll-free call is all it takes to get some good advice. The number is 1-800-613-0195. Sonny will answer your question on the air later in the show. This is Region 10 News at 5 with Brian Grenrood, Michelle Rose, and meteorologist Tom Pearson. How about lunch? Yeah, let's go to a steakhouse. Right, then we'll buy a couple of Ferraris and race to the coast. No, I'm serious. Excuse me, uh, this is Wendy's. Observe. Steakhouse.